again, just like running shoes, we need multiple different kinds of running shoes that are gonna fit different patients. These are all gonna fit slightly differently. Now, we'll start with a L505, which is basically a copped dress orthotic with a metatarsal pad. You might notice we don't have any that don't have a fully supported metatarsal pad. Two reasons, okay? Without this met pad, most of the time, this leather orthotic will slide forward in their shoe. Because the metatarsal pad makes their toes go down by putting pressure there, it keeps the orthotic in the shoe. Never thought about that, right? Mm -hmm. But it does. But say they say, Sabrina, I know that Dr. Crane said to get this metatarsal pad and this particular Linko, but that pad's driving me crazy. Hey, I have an alternative. So Sabrina could turn around and go, well, you know, I know that Dr. Crane wants you to have an arch support. So instead, I'm gonna go over here to a different company and I'm gonna get you this Dr. Jill's arch support, which is a prefabricated orthotic, just like the Linko. It's a little bit slimmer. It's a lot harder, okay? And the reason it stays in the shoe is because of the fact that it will sink into the back of the shoe and it won't move because it's firmer, where that leather Linko would slide without the metatarsal pad. Again, this is a great alternative if that met pad drives them crazy, but they're a lot firmer, okay? Now, these are a great alternative for your patient who has a custom orthotic and only wears a dress shoe, say 10, 15, 20% of the time at the most. This is something that will give them an arch support in their dress shoe, and it follows the 80-20 rule. What do I mean by that? I always tell my patients if they wear their custom orthotics 80% of the time, they wear anything else 20% of the time, as long as they're supported, they're probably gonna be okay. Okay, so this is good for that. And because they're used to the custom orthotic, the firmness doesn't usually bother them. That's what we have for dress. Now say, the patient goes, that's still driving me crazy. That's too much in my shoe. My shoe is too full, okay? We do have alternatives for that, and they're called Diamondbacks. All this is, is gonna give you a little bit of heel cushion and just a little bit of arch support. And if anybody ever comes in and says, I need an arch cookie, that's what this is, okay? This is great for a dressy boot that is probably just a teeny bit too tight and you just need a little arch support. It's supposed to be sticky right here, so when the people come back and say that it's sticky, it sticks into the shoe, okay? But all this is is a heel cushion with a baby arch support. These work in ice skates really well as well, okay? Just to give them a little bit of arch support. Not gonna give them firmness like the other ones, certainly not something you're gonna wear all the time, but great for those alternative types of shoes or for somebody who just cannot tolerate anything else. And that would be your Thule Diamondbacks. Okay, moving on. So then we go to your 400 and your 405. Well, your 400 is your go-to Linko. It's your basic Linko. It is a cupped heel. It's got arch support. It doesn't have any metatarsal support. If you notice down here, it's got these little metatarsal heads on it. So some people will actually put a little padding across here for reverse Morton's extension if they have a bunion, that kind of thing, because if they can't tolerate a met pad. So this is just a nice go-to. It's a full length sports arch support with a cupped heel. So it gives them just the arch support, but not a ton of correction, okay? Neutral heel cupped in the back. That's your 400. 405 is gonna look very similar because it's still got the cupped heel, okay? So your rear foot is only gonna give you that little two degrees of correction there, but it's got, if you can see a metatarsal little pad in there, that will drop the toes down, kind of like you saw on the dress one, okay? These are quite firm in the metatarsal pad area, so some people, it will irritate them, hence why sometimes we have to go back to the 400. But that's the 405. I do tell patients, give them four or five days of walking around, kind of get used to it. If they wear them for a full day, um, that first day, they'll feel like they have a bruise feeling here because they're not used to that because it is a firm piece. But the reason they make it firm is because it holds up. Remember, we want this to last a year, okay? If they made it too squishy, it wouldn't. Now, your 420 is the big sister, Lori, the big sister to the 400 because it has no metatarsal pad, 
but it has this post here. So just like going from a ghost to an adrenaline, I actually have more arch support here. So you go from two degrees here to actually four degrees. All right, so I'm actually taking their heel and pushing it over. So you can see that it's firmer on this side and not that side, so it's gonna tilt their foot. Does that make sense? Yes. But it doesn't have your metatarsal pad in the front, okay? So this is somebody who needs heel control, but the forefoot is still neutral. Okay? Here, you might wanna compare them to these because this is their baby sister. And you can see the difference. Now, your 425 has the whole shebang. Your 425 has the heel support and the metatarsal pad. So there's your sequence. All right, so if you've got your heel support here and you've got your metatarsal pad. This is somebody with a relatively flat foot that needs all of that support, okay? Got it. So that's the difference between the Linkos themselves. See that big sister one more time? Just hold it up. Oh, you want the big sister? Yeah. Okay, so we've got... See 425? 425. You've got your 400 and your 425. Okay. Okay, and then you have the... Oh, no, this is the... Four, uh, it goes 400, 420, 425. Okay. 425 has the metatarsal pad in it. Nice. Okay. So basically, doctors, when you're writing a prescription, should be telling you, I want posted or not posted, and I want met pad or no met pad. Okay. That being said, if the patient, if the doctor's writing for posted with a met pad, and they go, I can't tolerate that, it's okay to go down, all right, because if they're complaining this is rubbing too much, go down to the 400, you know. Go down to the 405 if they need the metatarsal pad. If the metatarsal pad's bothering them, then go down to, you know, the 400 again. That is, that's your go-to. They can't tolerate anything else, go to the 400 because it's gonna give them arch support. It's gonna give them some control. And we can always play with doing some extensions when they come in for their office visit. So I'd rather they wear it and have 80% correction than not wear it at all. Now, all the difference, these are all just the men's all the numbers are the same, okay? So basically 400 is your neutral heel, unposted forefoot to just not have that metatarsal pad. 405 is your neutral heel, okay, with a metatarsal pad. 420 is your supported heel, so your posted heel with no forefoot metatarsal pad. And your 425 is gonna be your posted heel with a metatarsal pad. So you have a nice progression there, okay? Does that all make sense? Now, there are times when we'll write for a pair of power steps instead, and I'll show you why. You might notice that we put a lot of working folk who wear work boots, okay, in the power steps. Why? They're a little bit firmer, a little bit heavier heel here, and just slightly more arch support. This may look like it's a little bit more, but this has actually got more of a curve to it, okay? It also has this little heel button here, so if they're having plantar fascial pain, it gives them a little bit more of a cushion. And they work, these work great in like cleats and uh, skates and things like that because you can trim them down to fit the forefoot, okay? But it snugs the heel a little bit more it's and wider. it's firmer. Well, it, it may be just the but size. Just they're about the same. Oh. Yeah, it's just a larger size. But um, the width wise also you can trim it because the firm part doesn't start till right there on the other side of my finger. Um, but they're just, they're harder, okay? So they last a little bit longer in a working type of standing environment. Now if they're a runner, they'll blow through these in five minutes. I mean, that's why we put runners in the Linkos. So, but somebody for standing a lot of time and especially in work boots, these tend to work a little bit better. What would you put your walkers in? I usually put my walkers in Linkos as well because the, the friction, the, the top cover works a little bit better. Um, and then last but not least, we have our diabetic over-the-counter inserts. These are posted with a little bit of a mat pad there. It's squishier, okay? They're firm, but they're not hard, okay? This is meant for accommodation. And here's a tip. These will always feel like the arch is too high the first day they put them on, every single time, because this piece is meant to squish in, meaning that they wear them one hour increasing per day for about a week, and if it still feels too high, then take some of the arch out, 
because I literally could just take a grinder and take see how that conforms there. I can take some of that arch out very easily on the grinder, but most people will sink into the orthotic. Okay, so that's why one hour increasing per day. Same thing with the metatarsal pad. You can actually take this, flip it that way on a grinder, and take the metatarsal pad out. Okay, but again, oh, you can see just from me doing that, you can see the imprint on my fingers. Okay, and so you will slip into this. This is a great arthritic orthotic. This is a great orthotic for patients who have neuropathic diabetic feet and need to be protected, okay? Because it will conform to them over a period of a week to two weeks and they'll feel better and better and better each day. A lot of my rheumatoid arthritics are in these. So that's a good option for that. It's also good for that frail little old lady who wants to go out walking. You put her in a ghost and you give her one of these that she kind of conforms to and she won't get as many blisters because a lot of elderly women in particular don't have a lot of fat pad on the bottom of their foot. This gives them that extra fat pad. Okay, make sense? And I think orthotic wise, that covers everything we have. Oh, kitty orthotics. Let's talk about kids for a second. As I take the whole thing down, that's always good. Here, have a new <laughs> How to hang her. This is literally kids orthotics on a string, okay? And the reason why is because this is how you size them, because they have no, no sensical manner of shoe size to them. It's all what the kid's foot looks like. This is a lot deeper. This is called a UCBL type orthotic. Um, these are usually used in kids up to about the age of 10, okay? Um, it holds their heel really significantly and pulls it over, and you can see there's a lot of posting to it. This is your kid who has calcaneal apophysitis or irritation of their heel growth plate. This is your kid with a very flexible flat foot. Okay, we have a lot of those. And a lot of kids with super flexible flat feet will do very well with the kitty orthotics, as I said, up until about the age of 10. Um, and we had, we had a gate plate here, but if you basically you take this kitty orthotic and you grind off a side like that, you can make an in-toe gate plate. You can also grind the other way and make an out-toe gate, gate plate. Um, which can be done simply, or we can order them that way. They're, they have a pre-made that way. Where are the gate? I think we have some. We have one, and I thought it was out here, but it's not. So I'll look in the closet, see if it's there. Um, if the kids can't tolerate that, we can always order them a kitty power step, okay? Which is a lot more squishy, all right? They also blow through these a lot quicker, which is why we keep the, the kitty orthotics on hand, okay? And the kids' orthotics are made out of harder plastic too, right? They are made out of a much firmer, they're made out of a polypropylene base, which is basically a firm orthotic. Um, and it's very similar to what we would make um, an adult that needs that much control. But you can see that because kids' feet tend to be, need to be conformed and need to be held, it's bracing their foot into the right position, okay? And again, if it doesn't fit right, it's gonna irritate them here, it's gonna irritate them there, so that's why you need to make sure it fits. If it doesn't, fits. if you put them, their foot in it and it's not impinging on either side, it usually fits. But you wanna make sure that that's right behind the metatarsal head like that. If it's up too far, you know, so okay. palpate that first MPJ, obviously not my finger, but palpate the first MPJ to right behind the sesamoids. If you press right there and see how the toe goes down, mm -hmm. that's where it should be. Okay. Not up any farther than that or it's gonna irritate them. Okay? And again, if they're a little bit off, we can grind them. No big deal. Fix that on. So, and that's a nice way to get kids through the growing phases without having to make them a custom orthotic because at $60, that's a lot better than 500 every six months for mom. So, all right. I think that's it for arch supports and shoes. All the rest of the stuff is stuff that we already have. I would recommend that the Everybody take a look at these. These are great. Um, this is your compression calf sleeve. And what's really nice about this is that it really compresses that patient that has shin splints or ten anterior tibial tendonitis. And not only does it help with that, but it, say somebody has a, a calf strain, you know, it's a really nice compression sleeve, but it doesn't impinge their foot. And you can see how it actually compresses right around the Achilles as well. So take a look at those. And 
The other is the FS, which is the foot sleeve. These are great for patients with plantar fasciitis. They do come in a pair. And the difference between this and your nylon anklet is the zones of compression. You see the different zones? It actually compresses right around the heel and the plantar fascia and it really kind of pulls that foot in. And a lot of patients who get taped at physical therapy, this is a nice alternative to the tape. Okay, because it really does give that good compression. And it kind of looks like that when you've got it on. And you can see the zones of the compression on the back. So these are $40, but you get a pair, and that's a lot better than taping my foot every day. Especially runners or people who sweat a lot love these a lot better than, than the tape. And it's just a matter of when it goes on, it should be snug. Shouldn't be cutting off their circulation so the toes go white, but it should be snug, okay? And people need to realize it needs to be just a wee bit snug. Anything else you wanna go over? Mm-hmm. <laughs>